Demopolis was founded in 1817 after Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo. A number of his generals were forced to leave the country. He had been exiled to St. Helena and they came to uh, Philadelphia where they purchased land in what was not yet Alabama, uh, but was a wilderness. And then they then traveled by boat to Mobile and then took uh, flatboats up the Tom Bigby River uh, to the land that they had purchased, um, which was a sort of impenetrable wilderness, uh, very densely overgrown with cane brakes, a sort of giant native bamboo. So I imagine them approaching the cliffs, the limestone cliffs, um, at this great expanse of river and this incredible heat, and looking up these huge vines tumbling over the limestone, and um, them attempting this, what turned out to be a, a rather futile attempt to grow grapes and olives. I think it's just this idea of, of the new world, meeting the old world, these generals coming from you know, the greatest army that had been in Europe at that time and that connection to Napoleon, who was such an enormous figure in the 19th century. I just found that fascinating. As I said, I'd loved the films of Werner Herzog, Fitzcarraldo and Aguirre, and uh, this really had that feel. Um, the old world sort of lost in the jungles of the new world. So the story of Demopolis came back to me, and particularly this one character, Madame Raoul, the Marchioness de Sinibaldi. She was married to General Raoul, who was one of Napoleon's very top generals. And uh, it seemed a very romantic character, this, this person who um, had been so high up in society and found herself making flapjacks while her husband ran a ferry across the Tom Bigby River. She represents the exile. She represents the person who finds herself in a new country, and I, I suppose um, that would tie to my own experience. Being, you know, a sort of permanent exile from England, I suspect I'll spend my whole life here painting the South, and uh, so it is, it is a series about someone finding themselves, surprisingly, in, in a different life, in a different world. People often ask me, as an artist, why I chose Alabama and the South. Um, for me, what I found so intriguing is the combination of enormous amount of space and the sense of being on the periphery of things. I was fascinated by the way that people's lives tended to sort of spill out from their homes, you know, uh, off their porch, across the yard. Uh, England is a very tidy place. There's a sense of the, the history vanishing, perhaps, or perhaps frozen by neglect. Um, the, as, you know, a lot is left alone. I'd say that hundreds of the things I've painted have vanished in the 30 years since I arrived. But what I love about the South uh, is this melancholic tone. I think people say that my work is somehow gothic. I, I would say I'm more interested in, in the melancholy of it and a sort of acceptance in the South of of history and, and of the darker side of the South's history. I think what's wonderful to come back to Alabama, come back to the place that first brought me here, is to, to meet people of a, a very kindred spirit, people who are fascinated in history and narrative and storytelling. Uh, it's, it is that spirit of the older South. I sort of lost touch with it a bit. So to come back here, I've reconnected with that energy. It's fascinating to see that it really hasn't changed very much rich with what first brought me to the south. There's a real 
acceptance of eccentricity, uh, the, the creation of eccentricity with people. Just outside Demopolis, there's a, a gentleman who's been decorating hay bales and building sculptures. I saw that first 20 years ago, and I think that's the sort of spirit I admire, it's just is to make art to speak to people. It made an impact on me, and as I went on through my career, I realized that, you know, there's a, there are no reasons not to paint what you want. You don't need to watch the art world or watch the critics or anything like that. And so for many years now, I have painted from my heart. The whole weekend has been a strange, uh, it's a wonderful completion of 30 years, really, of, of what brought me to the South. I love the idea of bringing the Marchioness back, imagining her sort of shrieking with alarm, saying, I'm not going back, never, never again. <laughs> It's very easy to get distracted and to pursue sort of celebrity in the art world and so forth, but that is not my audience. My audience is people who understand this work and feel it. <laughs> 